Hi, my name is Zyga and welcome back to another video. Today we will be discussing the SnapKit SDK slash Bitmoji for games. To be 100% transparent, this video is sponsored by Snapchat, but all opinions are my own and I will be going over the positives and negatives of this particular product. So let's get started. Before showing you how to integrate the SDK, let's talk about what it is. To put it shortly, the SDK allows you to integrate 3D and 2D Snapchat Bitmojis into your game. But it does more than just that. Snapchat SDK has a login kit that lets your community use their Snapchat account as a quick way to sign up and log in into your game, which I think is a great alternative to doing all the logic yourself. It also has a creative kit which allows users to share lenses, AR experiences, filters, GIFs, videos, links or captions from your game directly to Snapchat's camera or preview screen. Not exactly sure how that worked as I haven't checked it out myself, however it sounds pretty cool. And of course there's a bunch more features that I recommend you check out. So let's now get into how to get started. I will leave a link in the description to this GitHub repo from which you need to download this project. Or you can head on over to the Unity store and download Snap SDK from there. Just be aware that the version on the Unity store is not up to date and only allows you to use 2D bitmojis, whereas the GitHub one has 3D ones and of course is updated. Once you have the files you need, you can either open it through Unity Hub or just drag all the files into your project. And once the project is open, we can head on over to Snap, Editor, and click Snap Kit Settings. Once you do that, you will see a bunch of info on the right in the inspector. Simply keep this open. Then you will need to head on over to this website and create an account or log in to a current one. Then within here, create a new project and give it a name. Scroll down to Demo Users and enter your Snapchat username, then press Add. This will allow us to use our Snapchat account within our app. Now be aware that this is only when you're prototyping, once your app is fully released you will not have to add every single user. Under Platform Identifiers, select Staging and then your platform, in my case it's Android. And for the bundle slash app ID, you need to go into Unity, Project Settings, Player, select Android or Apple, and copy and paste this into here. Then create a new version over here and give it a suitable name. Inside of here we will enable Login Kit, Display Name, Bitmoji Avatar, Bitmoji SDK, and the Creative Kit. And under the Login Kit we simply need to supply a URI, and this is basically a link that we will be redirected to when we try and log in inside of our app. And I recommend just typing the name of your project followed by this. So mine would look something like this. Tutorial Snapkit Oath 2. Finally back on the setup page, make sure that under staging you have your version selected. Now we need to link this account to our Unity project, so copy the client ID that's under staging, and paste it under Client ID for both iOS and Android inside of Unity. And remember that URI, we need to use that too, so paste that into the redirect URI. And then the next three values will simply just be the three parts of that URI. So in my case, it looks like this. Tutorial, Snapkit, Oath 2. Now that that is finished, we can finally build the app. By the way, if you simply just open the GitHub project like me, you will have all the correct settings already. But if not, you will need to follow these guidelines, which can be found on the GitHub page. After the app is built onto your phone, by the way, I will link some tutorials on how to do that because it can be a little bit tricky with Unity, we can simply press login, which will redirect us to a login page. Here we can just use our Snapchat account and log in. And once that is finished, it will take us back to the app with our correctly loaded Bitmoji. Of course, at this point you can do anything with this, such as create games or just use this as your games as avatar, but you can also just not use Bitmojis at all. If you don't like the idea of them, you can just simply use the Snapchat logging as a login system for your game. Now of course this is just a demo, however there is a lot of stuff you can do with this and Snapchat has provided a lot of documentation on it, but also going through the project is a really nice idea as it lets you learn how the code works, but it's all fairly simple and I recommend it to beginners. Okay, so now that you have it set up and you know about it, let's talk about how I feel about this SDK. Now I think overall it's a great tool and it can help developers make their games better and I would highly recommend using it if you're looking for a login system or simply because you want users to have customised characters. I also think there's a lot of potential with it because as I said it has that entire creative kit so you can use filters and a bunch of other stuff such as an AR camera and etc. So I think it has a lot of potential. However, the only downsides that I found of this SDK so far is that the documentation can be a little bit confusing. When I was initially setting up my project, there was a few things I wasn't exactly sure about, so I hope that they will update the documentation to make it easier for people to follow, 
Of course, I've now made this tutorial, so it should also be quite simple. And the main two other concerns that I have is first of all, the Snap SDK on the store isn't updated, and I think that's slightly misleading because a lot of people find it easy to just add the asset in from the store, so updating that would be really helpful. And I also think the project on GitHub should have a package option. So right now it's just the entire source code, so you can download it and easily open it up. However, if you're trying to integrate it into an already made project, it's a bit of a hassle because a lot of the package settings, the project settings and a bunch of other stuff is kind of hard to get integrated into your project, which is why I think a package option would be great, or either updating the Unity store one as I mentioned already. That being said, it is free and I'm sure that they will update those things as they get more feedback. So overall, I think this is a really solid foundation with only a few minor issues in my opinion, but they're not as bad as you think they are. You can technically still overcome them and there's nothing game breaking. So that is it for this video. If you would like to access any of the links or files that I showed in this video, I will leave links down below. Now thank you for watching and I will see you guys in another video. Bye!